Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to another episode of the Expert to Authority show. This is the show for coaches, speakers, and trainers who want to grow their businesses while making an impact in the world. And today we are talking about becoming a digital nomad and how to live as a digital nomad, how to run your business as a digital nomad, traveling the world. I mean, isn't the dream for a lot of people making money, doing what you love while traveling the world. And I have to say that it was a word that was new to me until a couple of years ago. And then I started traveling, running the business everywhere. And that's where I met our guest today. We were speaking at the same conference in Madeira, an island, a Portuguese island and on the, the African, African coast. And that's where we connected. We had many conversations. And I said, she needs to come on the show to talk about her experience because what she has learned about being a digital nomad from her experience, plus uh, um, her experience in creating content for digital nomads is second to none. So let me get started. Actually, before I introduce our guest, uh, remember that if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And secondly, check out the resources uh, in the description or the show notes because that's where you will see all the links uh, from uh, our guest and also the webinar conversion kit, which will help you create a high converting webinar presentation uh, in your business. So check out all the resources. They are in the show notes. Now, let's get started and introduce our guest today, which is a, a digital nomad, entrepreneur and thought leader who has traveled more than 60 countries, 60 countries in over 20 years. Um, uh, she's the author of Digital Nomads for Dummies, host of Badass Digital Nomad podcast, uh, which actually you will be able to hear the interview that we did together as well. Uh, she also has a YouTube channel, Traveling with Kristen, and also she's the Go Oversee Mentor for International Living. Uh, her work has received more than 85 million views, 85 million views online and we will talk about what she's learning her 20 years of experience becoming a digital uh, nomad. Kristen, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you, Simone. Great, great to be here. All right, so you're not new to podcasts. We talked about recently you've done more than 200 uh, podcast uh, interviews. We are going to get started first before we talk about running your business everywhere, becoming a digital nomad. I want to know what's the tool that you want to share, something so good that people need to know about that makes your life or business better. Over to you. Simone, I am so excited to share with you and your audience this tool that has completely changed my life. And it is especially useful for anyone who is a note taker, where you like to save ideas and write things down. And it is called Workflowy. So Workflow with a Y at the end. And this app, I think they describe it as like your brain and your, your brain organized, basically. This is a way for you to organize your brain. And you start with one bullet and you can add as many bullets as you want. And these bullets are expandable. So you can have a bullet for personal, for business stuff, for ideas, and then you can just keep adding to those bullets. And so it, it's a, it allows you to condense the bullets so that you don't get overwhelmed. But if you want to find something, you can do that very easily. You can put hashtags, you can put photos in there. And this is where I do all of my brainstorming and strategizing and planning. And I like it because it's just very straight and simple and you don't have to be like drawing on things or or whatever. It's just right there. And this is a way, for example, this is the way I wrote my book. So you can drag the bullets in different orders. You, so if you're writing a book, you can change the chapters around. This is how I plan all of my YouTube videos out. And it's very affordable. I think it's like $49 a year or something. And it just really helps you stay organized and not lose any of those amazing ideas that you have when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh my God, I got to write this down. Where do I put it? you know where it's going to go. No, I had two thoughts immediately. Uh, number one, yeah, when you said organize your brain, I said, okay, that's a challenge. I mean, for me, like if someone is able to organize my brain, they will win a Nobel Prize. So <laughs> I definitely need to check it out. <laughs> yeah. And secondly, uh, it, it feels like the way you described it, it's like a mind map on steroids. 
uh, where normally mind map software, or even like if you are taking notes using a mind map system, you can keep expanding, but then mm -hmm. there is a limit. Or sometimes I found the mind map software that I've tried to be very clunky. Yes. They're not useful. So I abandoned them straight away. W what makes a workflow different from a clunky mind map software, for example? What makes it different is its simplicity because I've also tried those mind map software and I get overwhelmed and it's just too slow to get the information down and then you don't really know what to do with it. But with Workflowy, it's just text based. So you just literally can start with one bullet and then build from there. And, um, and so then you never lose your ideas. But with normal notes apps, so notes on Apple iPhone, which I still use for some things and with uh, Evernote, is you end up with a lot of folders. And yes. this is kind of how my email inbox looks, right? You've got tons of folders on the side. Right. You never actually open those folders. You don't no, go in there. They're, they're like a, they're, they're the forgotten pit of despair. They're yeah. Just, nothing happens. But with Workflowy, you've got uh, things organized by topic. So it just looks like a bulleted list and it hides everything. So the, the only time you see things is if you click on that topic, uh, whatever you made for that bullet, and then you can go deeper into the singular bullet. It's kind of hard to explain until you I, actually I, I use can, it. I but see, yeah, I can, I can see it. It makes it, it makes it simple, makes it easy. So Workflowy, the uh, link is uh, in the show notes. So scroll down, check it out. It's Workflowy. And uh, you can scroll down and check the link and register. By the way, we are not sponsored by Workflow. This is a general recommendation. There is no affiliate link. Just put it, uh, just uh, uh, check it out. And I'm definitely going to going to do it too. Uh, they now, have an app too. I have it open on my computer right now in a tab. I can't live without it. <laughs> uh, awesome. So Workflow, check it out. Now, Kristen, talking about um, uh, becoming a digital nomad, you know, we have uh, a lot of people that are listening here. They're coaches, speakers, trainers, uh, creators, uh, and they dream about traveling. They dream about uh, traveling the world. And even if they could travel the world, because even though their work is done in a laptop and so on, something is still stopping them. What have you found to be the number one reason this stops people or number or a couple of reasons that really stops people from saying, you know what, let me follow my dream. Let me travel the world while running my business. Well, what if I have stopped them? I find there are three things that stop people. Actually, the first one is not having anyone in their social circle or in their community who's doing it to model after. It's still something that is not mainstream. It's it's not as fringe as it once was, but it's certainly not mainstream. Um, and then the second thing is that it's just not a typical path in society. So it's not something like, oh, you become a doctor, you become a lawyer, you become a digital nomad. It's something that you have to seek out. And I think maybe in the next five or 10 years, definitely in 15 or 20 years, it's going to be a normal thing that everybody's doing. But I think we're still a few years away from that. And um, so people uh, kind of think that it's out of their reach when it's actually quite practical. Um, and then the third thing is they are waiting for a time that never comes. So this is waiting for a perfect time to start traveling, a perfect time to change jobs, a perfect time to go overseas, or maybe they're just waiting for permission from somebody that's never going to come because we get that feeling like, we need that validation when we make a big life decision. And so those are the three things that that hold people back. But when you can seek out some examples of how other people are doing it, um, you realize that it is in your power to be able to do it yeah. and that you can give yourself permission and you don't have to have it all figured out when you just start, then you can be on your way. I can uh, think about what stopped me from <laughs> traveling because I always loved traveling. I mean, I moved to the UK from Italy when I was 20 and uh, that was a big part of exploring the world while I was working in restaurants every weekend. When I had a weekend off, I was taking a flight around Europe, uh, traveling consistently. It's very easy to fly in Europe or in and out of the UK. Um, I mean, it was uh, before before Brexit. Now it's a bit more complicated. But uh, other than that, uh, I remember that I was waiting for that perfect time. 
when the business is going to be a certain way, when I will have this mo- this money, when uh, things are going to be settled, when I will move more things online. And uh, eight years into the business, uh, I was still running my events in London with very little traveling to the point that it was my wife that bullied me <laughs> to taking time off for our honeymoon <laughs> saying, you know, we're having our honeymoon. You got a year to figure it out how you can take three weeks off so we can travel. That was the extent of how much I wasn't traveling and I went far away from uh, uh, from my dream. Uh, so I'm curious from your side, what was the catalyst for you? What was that moment that made you say, you know what? I'm off. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be different for everyone. And I think you made a really good point about money because that is another thing that holds people back psychologically not necessarily financially because this lifestyle can actually be quite reasonable where you can spend the same amount of money as you spend living in your home country or in some cases you can save money if you move to a place that's more affordable like if you're listening to this podcast from California or Austin Texas you can move to Europe for 30% less you could move to Southeast Asia for a fraction of the cost of your rent in in those places. And so you can actually save money in this lifestyle. So that's another thing. But as far as the catalyst for me, I always loved to travel and I was always looking for ways to do it. So when I was younger, I was a competitive surfer and that was my vehicle to travel as I would travel to Hawaii and Mexico and Puerto Rico and go to surf competitions. And then when I got to college and university, it was studying abroad. So I studied abroad once in Costa Rica and once in Australia. And that was my method of being able to travel. And then once I graduated from business school, I got a job offer in Costa Rica Mm -hmm. selling real estate. And so I ended up moving there lived in Central America for eight years. And as technology got better, I just came to the conclusion that I didn't have to live there anymore. I could do my job remotely. And so I could I could travel the world. And I was kind of looking around like, should I do this? You know, and nobody really had an opinion at the time. My friends were like, okay, yeah, sounds good. And I was just like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to start traveling. And I had actually just gotten out of a a long-term relationship where we were living together and it was January or February 1st of 2013 when I actually got on the plane and started this journey, Mexico, up the coast of California to Canada. Then I went to London and I was in Berlin and the Isle of Man. And then I ended up in the Philippines and Thailand. I mean, I just went everywhere and I was just running my business online and I had some of my, my best financial years ever were as a digital nomad, because I think I was just really happy (laughs) to be traveling. And I was, I was getting a lot done. I was very productive and uh, very focused. Like I would go to Rosarito, Mexico for a month. And I have this beautiful ocean view, Pacific ocean, and just be like grinding and working out and surfing and working. And yeah, it, it just kind of went from there. And, And this eventually became a lifestyle where I sometimes travel fast, sometimes travel slow, sometimes have a home base somewhere. And then of course, during the pandemic, I was back in the U.S. Uh, for a couple of years living in Miami. But yeah, I just really love the flexibility that this lifestyle provides. And once you experience it, it's really hard to go back to a traditional brick and mortar job. It is. It is. And uh, uh, it, I, you, you said something that is definitely going to be a strong decision, like a strong point for a lot of people, which is uh, I actually had, so you had some of your best financial months when you were traveling, when you were out. And I experienced that as well. This was one of the ways my wife convinced me to travel more. This is what she did. She said, I think I have a feeling based on the conversations that we had, that actually you make more money when you travel. I said, no, no, that's not true. I said, okay, let's look at your best month. And I looked at all my best month in business and they all happened when I was traveling. Wow. And that was like, how, how is that possible? So one, it destroyed my belief that was attached to I make more money when I'm home because right. now I had no proof of that. I have proof of the opposite. And then secondly, I was exploring why. And as you said, 
I'm way more focused when I'm traveling because uh, I want to go out. I want to experience. I'm very selective with the work I'm doing. I'm doing the things that matter the most. And then uh, I'm spending the rest of the time being happy. And I remember working with um, a financial coach. Like she's a, she basically brings together money and spirituality. And their take on it is uh, money is uh, a byproduct of uh, you being happy, of your state of happiness. So the more the happy you are in what you're doing and how you're doing things, actually, the more money you attract. And and I have proof of that consistently that to be true. So for everyone who is actually a bit more reserved, like says, no, I'm resistant here because I got this to give up. And this, you might actually doing yourself a disservice like I was doing, but by not traveling. And yeah. that was an eye opener for me. I, I think what else that happens is that you get inspired. You get inspired by the places that you're going. You get so many ideas and then you meet amazing people. Like we were having dinner in London recently and just amazing conversations with other entrepreneurs at the table. And that helps you stay motivated and stay on track and really level up. Like even where we met in Madeira Island, we were surrounded by other, you know, 85 other like-minded people that approved of what we were doing. We're living similar lifestyles and also were either wanting to start online businesses or already were in different phases of their entrepreneurial journey. And so that can be something that if you just grow up in one town and you never leave, you have to really be intentional about seeking out that kind of community around you or finding it online through masterminds and other sorts of groups to, to stay motivated. Yeah, and 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 also a caveat for everyone was it doesn't have to be one way or the other, because uh, everyone experienced being a digital nobody in their own way. For example, I have a base, uh, got my place in London, and then I used as a base to travel everywhere. Some people they live without base, so I think everyone will find what's comfortable, uh, what's comfortable for them. So I know that you do a lot of work actually with people, helping them out figure out you know, their next steps. And that's a big part of the courses that you run. You have an online program about that as well. Uh, how do you help someone identifying their own way? What will be the starting point? Well, I actually have a an online course that I developed during the pandemic when I realized that everybody, or not everybody, but so many people were shifting into working from home and remote work. And a lot of people lost their jobs at that time. So I was doing live streams and helping people, you know, this is how you can make money online. And I also had to change my business model, which is travel and relocation. And nobody was traveling or moving to other countries for a couple of years. So I had to make money in different ways through content creation and affiliate marketing and, and, and learn new skills as well. Um, so I created this program called Freelance to Freedom, which is just a 30-day program to help people figure out what skills do they have that they could actually make money with online right now. So there's infinite options of going out and learning a new skill, like becoming a, a programmer or learning graphic design or something. But what do you know how to do now from your previous jobs, you have a lot of skills, you know how to do a lot of things, a lot of tasks. And how can you offer those skills online as a freelancer, as a professional services provider to your network, to your, or to, you know, cold contacting people or going on Fiverr and Upwork and those sites. And so it's just helping people figure out what do they like doing and what do they already know how to do that has demand in the marketplace that they can offer it from home. And that will be the first starting point. Find out, okay, what is that you already know and that uh, you can you can use. Now, before we go, we move forward, if someone wants to find out more about the online course, uh, where they can go, what's the link? And of course, uh, the um, uh, all the links are going to be as well in the show notes or the description, but let everyone know where they can find out more about the online course as well. Sure. That is at digitalnomadbootcamp.com. And we can also give your audience a $100 discount if they use your referral link. So we'll put that in the show notes as well. All right. Repeat again the, the, um, uh, the domain. Digitalnomadbootcamp.com. So digitalnomadbootcamp.com. 
check it out is going to be in the show notes and you have a hundred dollars discount as well uh, i want to know now uh, i want to switch the conversation to monetization because uh, we are going to talk about uh, also your first webinar that's something we're going to talk about how how did it go as well after the conversation that we had um, but I want to know the different ways in which you make money, because one of the things that I was really surprised by hearing your presentation is that in the business world, traditionally, there is this, uh, this advice that is given, which is uh, stay in your lane, follow one lane, have one business, make it work. While you said, no, screw that from what I understood and then have multiple ways in which you're actually supporting yourself and which are actually making income. Uh, so I would love everyone to know what are all the different ways because it can inspire someone, first of all, to say, uh, well, I can do multiple things and still make them work. And then secondly, it can inspire someone else to think about something that they've not thought about. So what are all the ways in which you monetize what you do? Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of new monetization channel since I started creating content, but I started with just one. So I think that's really important for everyone to just start with one offer or one service or one way that you can make money because at the end of the day, the 80-20 rule, you might end up making 80% of your income from 20% uh, of your activities anyway. So my very first income stream I was selling real estate in Costa Rica. So the way that I made money was through real estate commissions. Uh -huh. But when I first started out, I was doing a lot of other things. I was teaching surf lessons. I was waiting tables. I was hustling a lot because I wanted to maintain that lifestyle. But once I started earning enough commission, I you know quit those other jobs and I just focused 100% on real estate and did that for about seven years. And then I uh, started to transition into relocation. So instead of helping people uh, buy properties, I was helping people move to other countries and helping them find rental properties. So then I had two income streams. One was the consulting fees that I was charging and then also through rental commissions. Uh, and that's when I started learning about affiliate marketing because a lot of people needed other services. And so I started working out referral deals with lawyers, um, with financial institutions and signing up for people's affiliate programs because I kept recommending certain products and services. And then it was another, so that was 2011. From 2011 to 2018, that was my main income, right? Consulting. And then in 2018, I decided to create a personal brand and get into content creation, which is something that I had been wanting to do from the very beginning, from when I was in, in college. I used to like write book manuscripts and film videos and take pictures. I was always a content creator, but I didn't know at the time that I could do it for a living because technology was a lot different in 2000 versus 2020, right? So once I started with a content creation and uh, starting a YouTube channel, starting to write on Medium, starting a podcast over those last five years, I've created more revenue streams uh, that come through ad revenue on YouTube, that come through brand deals and sponsorships from my channel and podcast, uh, that came through Medium, um, getting paid through their Medium partner program. And then I wrote the book, Digital Nomads for Dummies. And so, um, and now I've also added a lot more uh, types of affiliate relationships with travel insurance, um, banking, luggage, uh, backpacks, travel bags. So anything in my field of remote work and travel, getting on the Amazon influencer program. And so these are a lot of different things, but I just recommend that people, you know, start with one and then start adding uh, new things on from there. I started creating digital products, selling travel guides, creating online courses. And now I have this coaching program, which um, we can talk about uh, why I did the webinar. And I've been running this coaching program for three years. So it is helping people relocate to different countries. Mm -hmm. But instead of me doing it one-on-one, -on -one, I'm coaching small groups of like 10 to 20 
or 30 people at a time and um, walking them through that process so that they can plan their relocations themselves, but with guidance. So usually the, the options are either Google it and sink or swim or hire some you know, international relocation company that's going to charge a ton of money um, or hiring a consultant like me. It's like could be tens of thousands of dollars or joining a program that you can get that at a discount and you can get that help and support in planning your move. So that's become another uh, significant income stream for me as well as my position as the Go Overseas Mentor at International Living where I'm creating a lot of content for them a lot of editorial content, videos, so writing and uh, speaking at their events and hosting their events. So I have a lot of jobs right now. <laughs> it is uh, it is fascinating. It is fascinating to hear because uh, I think that uh, for a lot of people that have maybe like a creator archetype, they love to create content, they love to create things for other people, they love to recommend. What you're doing can be actually the blueprint for others. And uh, before we go to the webinar, I know that a big part of your monetization strategies, they actually come from the back of the audience that you have built over the years, from your podcast, from your YouTube channel, from your social media platform. And, and you know, not everyone, uh, there are a lot of people great, cr able to create great content, but not a lot of people great at building audiences, because you can have people building great content but not being great at building audiences. So if you were to give a piece of advice, like the number one thing, the biggest one that you can find for someone that uh, has some great ideas, great content to help them build their audience, what would it, would it be from your position, from your experience? Well, I started with this book called Make a Name for Yourself. It's a very old book. We can put it in the show notes. And... I think I read that back in high school or college because I was really fascinated with this concept of creating a personal brand. So I would first tell people, you know, if that's something that resonates with you, then, you know, follow that thread. There's also another woman that I used to read her stuff. Um, let me look her up really quick. Her name is Doreen. Have to find it. I forget her last name, but we'll put it in the show notes. Yep. And she had a lot of content as well on creating a personal brand. And so I, I learned through other people first. So once you make the decision that that's something you want to pursue, and for me, I felt like it just makes sense. You know, having started other businesses and other brands, it's so much work to create a brand that you have to have a really good exit strategy for it. And I thought, I'm always going to be me. I'm always going to have this name. I'm always going to be myself. So why not monetize myself? Because I don't have to change companies or change brands. It's something that can grow and evolve with you over time. So you look at people like Ryan Holiday, Tim Ferriss, Joe Rogan, like these people, they've created value out of their personality and their likeness. And there's never been a better time to do that with content on the internet. I mean, you can be TikTok, pick your platform, you know, you can do it. And then after that, I think it's really important to know why you're doing it. So it's not just going to be to be rich and famous because that's not even that great. I mean, obviously we want, we all want to have money, but uh, you know, you look at very famous people like Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian, Mr. Beast. This is not like the best <laughs> lifestyle when you're that recognizable. So you have to really know why you're doing it. And um, and for me, it was feeling this very strong conviction that everyone should know that this lifestyle is possible and that they can have it. Because I lived this lifestyle since I was 20 years old. Nobody told me I could do it. No one gave me permission. Everyone thought they had to wait until they were millionaires or until they were retired and their kids left for college before they could have this kind of freedom in their lives. And I just wanted to tell everybody about that. And that's my mission in life. So that's why I do it. So really get clear on what is your message? Why are you creating content? Who are you trying to help with your content? So knowing why you want to do what you do, and then um, thinking deeply about your ideal viewer avatar or your customer avatar, who is the, the person that you're reaching out to. It's not just these anonymous people on the internet, it's actual human beings. And 
what do they look like? How old are they? What do they do? What do they want help with? And try to find that middle ground where the content that you are creating is created for the type of person that you want to help, you know? So that's a good yeah. place to start. That's, that's brilliant. And I love what you said about uh, making a decision instead of going a business brand, growing your personal brand, because uh, that will stay with you forever. And there are a lot of people in the coaching industry or the speaking industry that uh, they don't understand that this is a personal brand driven industry. So they will have their website with their logo and they will put it and you cannot find a picture of them. And in this industry, people connect with you as a person. That's why they want to buy from you. That's why people are looking for a mentor. That's why they're looking for a coach. That's why they're looking for a consultant because they want to see, they want to have something that you have and they don't or that you can give them that they want to feel the sense of possibility and it only happens by connection. So anyone that says, shall I build my business brand? No, no, no. Start consistently with your personal brand. It can be attached to a business. It's not a problem, but let the business grow through your personal brand. And this becomes a, a better way to then build a loyal audience that then is going to follow you throughout the years because not just a, a one and done. It's not it's going to be one video. It is uh, like you've done more than 200 podcast interviews, all your YouTube videos. And that's how you've been able to grow that audience. Now, yeah, and I'm so far from the 10,000 hour mark. You know, I feel like I'm barely getting started and this is something that you can do your entire life. So even with... I was thinking about it. I'm like, I've done 230 podcast interviews about Oprah's done 10,000 interviews, you know? So there's always a lot more, a lot more to grow. So it's got to be something that, yeah, you're in it for life and you don't have to be a travel influencer or, you know, business or entrepreneurship. It's like, just think about you and your personality and what makes you unique. There's only one of you in the world. You have your family, you have your set of friends, you have your skills, your hobbies, your interests, and you have this unique combination that no one else has. So the good news is you don't really have to change. You don't have to change who you are. You don't have to like really work at it. You just, you're just allowing other people to get to know you, whether your art is cooking or your art is creating code or writing code. See, I'm not a tech technical, so I'm like creating code, writing code. Uh, yeah. And I found, I remembered the lady's name I wanted to talk, tell you about. Her name mm -hmm. is Doreen Virtue. Doreen Virgil? Virtue, I think. Virtue. Wait, okay. No, wait, no, no, that's the wrong one. Sorry, cut that. All right. I'll find cut it later. <laughs> we'll find it. We'll put that in okay. the show notes. Now, yeah. I, what I want to talk about now, talking about monetization is going to be the last part of this interview. Talking about your webinar that you did, uh, I mean, $60,000 in a presentation, that's, that's a good gig. That's a really good gig. And uh, uh, very few people that uh, run into the webinar space, they might do hundreds of webinars. So they very rarely reach these results. And that was one of the first few that you had. I mean, we had a conversation. I know you came already with a very strong presentation. So we had to put a few tweaks there. But how how was it for you? What did you learn from this experience? What are some of the biggest points that you learned in getting such an incredible result? Because when you told me about it, I was over the moon. I was incredibly, <laughs> I was like, this is freaking awesome. Well done. And I got to say, I've never seen someone that is not experienced in webinar getting these results. Um, Thank most of the you. time it comes after, you know, after you run like 40, 50 webinars and then you crack the code. No, you went out of the gate. Boom, 60 grand. I'm like, damn. Great. Actually, so, we did we did 70 grand. 70 grand. Pardon yeah. me. Pardon <laughs> me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Ben Simone, 70 grand. So what, yeah. what, did, what did you learn from that experience? Well, I learned that it is a, a framework. So it's something that you can learn. Uh, well, first, it's about your offer, right? What is it that you are selling? And it does seem like an overnight success, but I have been practicing this. I've been working in this field of international relocation since before I launched my company in 2011. So I already had 12 years of full time helping people with this one-on-one. -on -one. Before, it was really like 
eight or nine years of doing it full time before I ever created an offer for a group coaching program. And then I sold that program in a beta test in 2021. And then I did an uh, uh, additional, I did three groups total while testing it, different price points and getting my sales process down, which was through one-on-one phone calls for high ticket sales. Cause this is a program that's six thousand dollars, but five to six thousand depending on the payment plan. And so I I knew a lot about my audience and my customer and what they needed, what their pain points were, and created a program around that. And I actually sold the first program before I created it and fulfilled it. So I really validated that that's what they wanted before I created it, which was a huge, you know, months long ordeal where I hired experts to help me with creating the course because it's one thing to know a lot of information. It's another thing to know how to teach it to somebody. So I took that very seriously. So I have, you know, all of this history building up to this webinar But what you know with high ticket sales is that it it requires a lot of one-on-one time on the phone or training salespeople. And so I was curious about if we could sell this offer in a webinar format. And when you listen to other gurus like Russell Brunson, they really cap these webinars at low ticket items, maybe up to $1,000. And then anything more than that, they're doing it on a phone call. So I'm actually quite surprised that we were able to do it. But um, I think it was just, you know, studying how webinars work and then adapting those, the presentation and that, that framework to my offer, and then going to you for advice and expertise and like tweaking very important things in the webinar that allowed us to get that result. And then also having qualified people on the webinar that were through uh, my partners that were the right audience who had the problem that, that my product and my offer solves. So it was really impressive to be able to do that without speaking with people one-on-one. And, and, and I think almost everybody who signed up had, didn't know me. So they didn't have the no like trust factor that my normal clients do have. And so that was what was really compelling. That that's what that's what I love about webinars because that's where you're building the relationship with people. That's literally the relationship builder for someone to say, here we go. But then mm-hmm. you really tapped into the most important points. Great offer, tested validated you know how to sell it you know the ins and outs you know how to deliver results for your clients you have case studies is proven it works yeah great presentation to get people through and uh, um, the right audience in the webinar coming from a partner endorsing you so even if they didn't have a relationship with you they had a relationship with a partner that was promoting you and yes that is invaluable because already there is a trust element so literally what you did uh, was a playbook, was uh, literally executed perfectly. And that's what we advise our clients in terms of scaling it. Like this is, a, you find more partners, you deliver deliver to their audience, and then that's how you grow and you grow your network. So quick plug here, check out in the show notes so you can find the webinar conversion kit. It's only $30. That's your starting point. So check it out in the show notes or go to webinarconversionkit.com. Um, question, still another question for you on the webinar side. How did you feel when you saw that result, um, about yourself, about what you just did? What was your reaction to that? I think initially I felt relief that, that it was a success because online business is hard and I've had a lot of failures before. Um, But then I also felt a lot of confidence and, and empowerment because this was, you know, the first time that we did it. So I, I had a lot more confidence that we can replicate this success in the future and scale it. Yeah. And that's, uh, and that's the most important thing is like what that first uh, webinar, sometimes I remember for me was the first sale. And I think I made uh, about like 147 pounds when, when it was, when I made the first sale on a webinar, but just that it gave me the confidence the possibility, let alone $70,000. So 
well done congratulations again and keep going with with your webinars uh to wrap up now if uh, people want to hear from you um if, let's see what projects and what you're working on at the moment if someone wants to say okay what is Kristen working on right now and where should i follow uh where can they go and what are you working on right now well, first of all, I want to say thank you, Simone, because this webinar would not have been as successful without your help. I mean, we might have sold maybe 10% or 20% of what we did. So uh, for everyone listening, like whatever Simone says, just do it because he knows what he's talking about. And just one phone call with you made the difference between a failure and a success. So thank you so much. And um, as far as uh, what I'm doing right now, the best place to connect with me is on YouTube, where I publish a new video every week at youtube.com slash traveling with Kristen, Kristen with a K and an I. And also on my website, you can subscribe for my weekly newsletter with travel tips and other things that I'm doing. And that's at travelingwithkristen.com slash subscribe. And then you can also search for Badass Digital Nomads podcast on any podcast platform. And we have weekly podcasts going out every Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. So all the links are going to be in the show notes. Uh, make sure you check them out. Follow Kristen. A uh, couple of reasons. One, you want to become a digital nomad, you're interested in uh, relocating somewhere else, or you're interested in uh, um, traveling the world or running your business, then this is an incredible resource. And I got to say, I listen to the podcast, I watch the YouTube videos, and what I like about the content that Kristen is creating is that it doesn't just talk about uh, the, the practicalities of living somewhere, but it talks, she talks about the culture. Um, the dynamics in living in a certain place uh, based on her experience. And I think that having an insight of uh, the place where you're going or just coming to the mindset of what you can expect, that can help you a lot. And I found this conversation very interesting with a lot of insights that I never considered um, before. Uh, so make sure you check her out, follow her. And, um, and then my last question to wrap up here, Kristen, is uh, if based on where you are right now, if you were to give yourself, uh, um, uh, let's say, 20 years ago when you started this journey, a piece of advice, what would be the number one piece of advice that you would give yourself, your young Christian, 20 years ago, starting this journey? What would you say? I would just say believe in yourself and trust your judgment because you have an intuition and you know what's best for you. So if you have an idea or you have an instinct to do something, then trust yourself and go for it. Even if everyone else thinks you're crazy and even if no one else supports you. I was very scared to start on my true path for a long time because I didn't have that confidence. So I would say start now and you will be happy that you did. Start now and have confidence in yourself. Kristen, thank you very much, everyone. Give a massive round of mental whoop whoops uh, to Kristen. It has been an absolute great interview. All the links again are in the show notes. Kristen, thank you very much again for being on the show. And uh, for everyone who's watching or listening, make sure you subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on your favorite, favorite podcasting platform and uh, leave us a good review. Uh, in particular, five star. Thank you very much. It's good for the guest. It's good for the show. It's good for my ego. Uh, it's good for everyone. So uh, <laughs> let us know what you like the most about this interview. Until next time, remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao. Ciao.